Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for this time we call Midweek Manna, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and uh, reflect on God's Word together. And, uh, we certainly hope and trust your week is going well to this point. A couple of weeks ago, I was went with my wife Heather to uh, the grocery store late one afternoon. We were getting a few things from, for supper that evening, if I remember correctly. And I, as we went in, I knew there were a few things that we had talked about, a few specific items that we had that we needed. And as we got into the store and I was following her, pushing the uh, grocery cart and watching her, and we would stop somewhere and she started looking at a couple of things and stop somewhere else and look at a couple of things, start grabbing a couple of things that I knew we didn't discuss. And I just got a big smile on my face and finally said to her, you're hungry, aren't you? And she said, yes. And I knew what, what was going on because it's something I've experienced myself multiple times, my guess and imagine we all have. And that is those moments that we go to the grocery store when we are hungry. And when we go to the grocery store when we are hungry, then all of a sudden everything looks good. And you end up getting things sometimes that you don't need or weren't planning on. And quite often you end up getting things that aren't necessarily good for you that you just start grabbing off the shelf because you go to the store at a time that anything does look good because of how hungry you are. And even though we've all heard not to do that, my guess would be many of us have done that before. And you know, there's some spiritual applications of that thought, of being careful along those lines. Max Lucado said one time that in comparing and going to the grocery store when you're hungry, he says, when you're, when you're lonely, you end up doing the same thing in life. That you end up pulling stuff off the shelf, not because you need it, but because you're hungry for love. And he says, because we fear facing life alone, we, we have a fear of not fitting in, we take the drugs, we fear of standing out, we wear the clothes, or for the fear of not being loved, we search for love in all the wrong places. And quite often there's, that is true, and there is a lot of truth in that. When we're not filling ourselves with things that are really the right things, we find ourselves lonely, if you will, and starving for anything or starving for attention. We end up pulling things off or seeing anything really that looks attractive to us. Really, when I was thinking about that time with my wife and reading and thinking about these comments from Max Lucado, it also reminded me of a story that Jesus tells in the Gospels, in which context of he's talking about really defending himself, folks that accuse him of uh, being Satan, if you will. And in that discussion, we find in Luke chapter 11, and he says this, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. And finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it founds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. There's lots of things that can be said about this particular passage, but I do think there's a principle that is, is given here by Jesus. And that is some, when we find ourselves not being filled with spiritual things, when we find ourselves being spiritually empty, if you will, that what will happen is that the demons in our lives, Satan will figure out ways to attack us. And even after maybe we've gone through a time that we've cleaned out our life of things that aren't healthy, things that are unhealthy spiritually, and even if we've gone through that time we've cleaned it out and maybe repented of things, confessed things, and put our life back in order, that if we don't fill our lives with spiritual food, then what can happen is we fall prey to things that we were dealing with before and sometimes even worse. And I think that principle that Jesus gives here is true. And it's a reminder for us all that we need to make sure that we don't walk through life spiritually hungry. 
that when we go out in life, when we go out in this world, when we go out in this culture, that we make sure that we are spiritually fed in a way that sure, we still may be tempted just like any time we go to the store, really, whether we're hungry or not hungry, we see things that may tempt us. That still will happen, but we'll be better prepared and better able to face those temptations when, when we are spiritually full. Well, how do we make sure we're spiritually full before we go out into this world and face this world? Well, obviously, there are a number of different ways we can answer that. Prayer being one, spending time with God, spending time in the Word, reading the Word, also making sure we meditate on the Word is another one. I also would encourage you not to uh, not take away from the importance of just being with other Christians and assembling together, time and in worship, hopefully finding encouragement from one another. Those are, are spiritual disciplines we always have in our life that can help fuel us. And along those lines, by the way, Scripture also talks about that for some of us, we need to make sure we fill our lives not just though with milk, but also make sure we fill our lives with meat. Most of us probably have heard over and over, yes, prayer, Bible study, worship, those are ways that we can feel ourselves spiritually, and they are true. And obviously, even a little bit of food is better than none at all. But we must make sure in doing that, that we, as we mature, understand the importance of just like any person, any child that matures into what they can eat, they go past the stage of just needing milk. Then we also go through times where we need to make sure we fill our lives with meat, things that need us to make us spiritually full. Make sure we're filled with things that when we do go out in life, when we do go out and face culture, that we are truly spiritually fed in a way that we are better prepared to handle any temptation that comes our way. And anything that comes before us is not so appetizing that we just go and grab it because of how hungry we are. Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst at your righteousness, for they will be filled. So just thoughts for us tonight here in the middle of this week. And we encourage you, for, we thank you indeed for joining us tonight because this is indeed one of the ways that we can be spiritually filled. It's having moments that we take a few minutes to uh, fill our lives, if you will, with thoughts and a focus on God's Word. And we certainly are thankful for you joining us this evening in doing that. For all of you in our church family that are watching this, we're so thankful to have this time together. Uh, for those that may be a, a guest of College Dale and maybe not familiar with our church family, we certainly are thankful for you joining us. Maybe one of the first times you are watching one of our videos, if that's the case, or even if it, even if it is a 10th or 20th time of watching it, we've not had a chance to connect with you. We certainly would love an opportunity to do that. You can call our church office, you can send us an email, you can send us a message through Facebook or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, a number of ways to connect with us. We love the opportunity to do that. For all of you, we do encourage you to join us for our time of, uh, of worship that's coming up here this Sunday. We will assemble here at our, Bible, at our building for Bible classes at 9 a.m. and then we'll assemble for worship at 10 a.m. We assemble here in auditorium. We love you to join us in person here. But if you're unable to do so, we will be live streaming our worship through our YouTube channel coming up this Sunday morning at 10 as well. And if you're watching this here as, we're, as we are recording this and showing this on Wednesday night, July the 12th, I also might mention we have our Vacation Bible School starting this Sunday night beginning, beginning at 6 p.m. And we'll continue on through next Wednesday night. And uh, if you love, if you're from our community or around, we certainly love to have you come and join us for our VBS starting this Sunday night. Again, thank you for taking a few moments to be with us this evening. We hope you have a blessed rest of the week. And let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. Father, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the great promises you give us that we put our trust in. 
We thank you for the spiritual food you provide for us through this chance of talking to you and through your word, through your spirit, and through just being with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, help us always remember to make sure we fill our lives with the spiritual food we need, that we don't leave our lives empty. And we pray that we will do so in a way that we can constantly face all of Satan's arrows and darts that he throws at us. Father, I know as we record this and, and uh, here in this week, we continue to have people in our church family and people we know well that are dealing with difficult situations, recovering from surgeries, going through treatments, uh, just a number of different things going on. And we lift all of those situations to you, ask you to wrap your arms around them. We continue to hear and see situations and in our country, in our world that continue to be troublesome. We, of course, are still mindful of the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. We pray for peace and to happen there soon for all the different situations we have really uh, throughout our world. And Father, as always, we do pray for the leaders of our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world, and our minds and hearts to be open to be guided by you in a way that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities to share with others good news about your son, Jesus. We pray all this in your son's name. Amen.